Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're gonna continue on our quest to examine different types of animals and converting them to a cartoon illustrative style. Um, the last session we did a toucan, which is in the, obviously the bird family. Today we're gonna to go with the uh, quadruped and we're gonna do a raccoon. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna be using reference um, today. I'm gonna to show you my reference really quick. Here's my reference. If you guys can see, just a three-quarter view of a raccoon on a branch. I've drawn raccoons before. Um, today I'm gonna to be using the Visual Dictionary. You guys have seen this book before uh, in the last session. It's, it's really good because literally it goes from dinosaurs, um, or at least an artist's interpretation of dinosaurs, all the way up to la 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 la. Um, aquatic life and insects. It's just so good and literally um, I got this from uh, a relative and they paid two dollars for it. So um, again the visual dictionary um, 608 pages 2500 illustrations really great um, reference. So I've done raccoons before. Um, I've done uh, you know semi-famous raccoons. <coughs> Excuse me. But what I'm gonna do today, and I'm really excited for you guys to experience this, is I'm just gonna do a really quick, um, I call them um, just to kind of flesh out and feel the, um, the, you know, what it feels like to do just a simplified version of a raccoon. So, <clears throat> obviously the raccoon has four, really quick <laughs> while I'm talking to you guys. It has uh, it has four arms. Oh, well, it has, doesn't have four arms. It has, you know, two lower uh, appendages and, and two upper, which makes it a quadruped. What's great about this is, and I try to explain this a lot to um, illustrators uh, in general and artists, is, you know, whenever, um, whatever your ideology is, um, whether you believe in God or not, whether you, you know, believe in Buddha or, or Muhammad or whatever, you know, their names are. The plain fact of the matter is we live in a world where there's a lot of similarities, okay? There's a lot of similarities um, and insects converted over to mammals, converted to fish. I mean, if you look at the, the structure and the overall structure, uh, you know, skeletal structures, you have the arms, you have the legs, even human beings that are, you know, walking upright, they still have four appendages. So <clears throat> what's really great whenever you work on stuff like this is the fact that, you know, if you've done animals before, you can really trust that you're going to be doing two arms or two legs. You're going to have a nose. You're going to have, um, you know, a lot of those things that you've done before. And, and it's going to be very familiar. Um, what I try to explain to people, and this is something that I'm learning all the time, and, and, and you know, I'm not the end all um, resource for this kind of stuff. I, I really enjoy animals, but again, you know, I treat it as a, a learning session. So I'm going to be learning something here today as well, um, even though I've done, you know, I've done raccoons before. So, just to really feel out what this raccoon, you know, what, what it feels like to draw a raccoon, what it feels like to feel that bulk, you know, starting out with the head. Um, and ultimately, I think this head's a little bit too small uh, for the body, but I'm going I'm to go ahead and roll with it anyway. And I'm doing a, a not, not really a realistic interpretation, but I'm using the reference a little bit more just because I'm talking. And what I'll do sometimes is whenever I'll, I'll, I'll put something in, like I'll, I'll, you know, I've got the body fleshed in pretty good. 
and I'm gonna come over. He's kind of sitting, or not sitting, but he's got a here, and then we're gonna do the. If anybody's ever seen a raccoon pick something up, they wash things. I used to watch uh, raccoons a lot at my house whenever I lived in Florida. I don't live in Florida anymore. I live in the mountains. And it was very fascinating to watch them because they wash things and they, you know, they've got like gloves on. It's very fascinating um, to watch them. And again, this is literally just to feel out what it feels like to kind of draw the different parts of the raccoon, you know, and thinking about, you know, where the muscles are and, and, and <clears throat> where the tuffeted of the fur comes and, you know, where the muscles are here and that tail comes around. <clears throat> Got some straps on it. Comes up. You guys know that I'm always looking for different um, illustrators and artists to admire and emulate and to absorb. And I've known about this particular artist uh, for quite a while. His name is Ronnie Williford. Uh, I believe he was a Disney animator but he's mostly a wildlife uh, artist. And I found his YouTube channel. I'd seen him on um, Facebook for a while. Couldn't draw the eyes here. We're just gonna do really simplified versions. Here, something simple. They always look like they're kinda sad. Unless of course they've got rabies. And then they're mad. They're just thirsty. I want some water. Give me some water. And then they die. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Ronnie Wilford. So he's just a really interesting guy trying to build his, um, you know, YouTube brand, YouTube um, presence. I believe he's friends with Aaron um, Blaze. And, and, you know, I'm pretty sure they've worked on stuff at Disney before. But he's got a really great demeanor and a really great teaching spirit. And I really enjoy it. Um... You know, he's only got like 250 subscribers, so if you get a chance, go over and check his stuff out. Ronnie Williford. You can find him on YouTube. He doesn't have a lot of videos right now, but, you know, I'm sure if he starts getting a little bit more um, traffic on his site, he'll really change his tune. And just, he's, he's a classically trained painter and illustrator, really great at color, really great, um artist overall, somebody that really sews back into the, the artist community and, and gives back and has a, you know, like, again, like I said, a, a teaching, a teaching spirit. So what I found out uh, by drawing this particular character or this particular uh, animal are, you know, in the realistic sense, first of all, his head's too small. I made his head too small. Um, and I, and I think I know you know exactly what happened here. I started out you know, circle a bit too small. I didn't define my forms and I just really concentrated on the gesture and the line of action. Obviously I would go back and, and change this a little bit. What I really, really enjoy about this are the, the, the forms and, and just the, the, the arm, you know, the arm has that, that nice arc right here. And then it comes up and it changes direction. It comes up like this. You know, and you can really accentuate the fur coming around and simplifying. You know, even if you wanted to go so far as to make him, you know, have like a mask. Um, one of the artists that I watch, and I, and I believe this is Ronnie, and he was drawing a turtle um, recently. And he said, what makes your drawings interesting? Because what we do as artists is we always fall back on these safety zones um, inadvertently, you know. We always fall back on these safety zones of things that we draw to just kind of maintain, you know, the maintenance of drawing. And, you know, he said, what you really need to do is change things up, constantly change things up, constantly challenge yourself, make yourself better. 
I'm gonna have some branches come around here like this. You know, come around here. I got some leaves that come around here. Maybe he's got some leaves here. Branches. He's got some shadow. Oh, change pencils. And you know, he basically he took a turtle and he and he did a drawing of a standard turtle, and then he went and um, steampunk made a steampunk two completely different, you know, sort of ideas. And but at the end of the day, it worked. It was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Nice video. Like 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 I said before, just you know, go and visit him, see what you think. He doesn't have a lot of videos, so don't expect a lot. <clears throat> but he's a good guy, or it seems that way. All right, allergy season up here in Georgia, which is where I live. So I made this foot a little bit wrong. So it curves down, it comes here, and then it's got a, a break where his toes are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna do this. And again, I, I'm always trying to determine where that fine line is between cartooning and realistic. Right now, I've rounded a lot of things out. I've accentuated the gesture a little bit. I've made him a little bit more, um, you know, cautious, like I just startled him, ha! Ah! So, um, this would be a good, uh, just a good beginning uh, thumbnail. And then I would go and I would do, you know, other thumbnails and keep refining um, that silhouette. So this, now that I've got this in the bank, per se, you know, the bank, my visual library, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and I'm going to really cartoonize and utilize the, the things that I've learned on this particular um, piece of art, and I'm gonna really just have fun um, creating a character. Because, you know, at Disney and a lot of the other animation studios, um, it, it's so interesting because you would think they would look for somebody that has really great cartooning skills. They aren't, they're not they looking for that. They want your drawings to be based in reality. That's why a lot of times they'll hire really high-end um, animal artists to do realistic, um, realistic animal drawings, and those will be the basis for the animated features. So get these principles down um, of animal anatomy and what it feels like to draw animals semi-realistically or in your style, you know, even if you have to go so far as to do some, uh, some skeletal studies uh, and stuff like that. Um, there's a, uh, an illustrator that I absolutely love. I've got her book right here. <clears throat> you can tell that I love books. The Science of Creature Design. Um, by Terrell Whitlatch. And what's really nice about Terrell is she combines different types of animals that come from the realistic world and she'll do skeletal studies, which is really cool. And then she'll do muscle studies. Um, and I think Terrell worked on Star Wars in episode one and two, and she's just got a really good eye for, um, you know, for uh, animal anatomy and, and just really nice. And she examines it from not only an artistic viewpoint, but also, um, a uh, scientific, uh, you know, scientific breakdown and why, you know, the muscles are here, why it has fur, and she'll do gesture studies and, the, you know, anatomy and stuff like that. It's really great. Um, I think I paid uh, 30 bucks for this on Amazon. Um, I've got two of these books. I, I don't remember what the other book is. It's somewhere around here. But it's just a really great book. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> okay, so as you see, I have now transferred over to a new piece of paper. So now we're gonna do a cartoony style uh, raccoon based upon the um, the experience that we just had drawing a semi-realistic uh, drawing. So I am using newsprint today. I'm using um, Prismacolor Premier uh, pencils just because I like the flow and how they interact with the tooth of the newsprint. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking what, what would be a really good base?
So what I'm doing right now is I'm really roughing in the, um, you know, the gesture. I'm feeling out what and where I want the face to go. This is a very rough experimental <laughs> stage, you know. Um, you know, I remember whenever I was drawing the realistic, semi-realistic um, raccoon, I remember, you know, in terms of his body type, his body type, he's got this, I don't want to call it a potato sack, but it's it, it's got a lot of fur to it, so you have to always, you know, you, you take into account all those uh, little elements that you learned um, whenever you're working on, um, you know, the realistic version of it. So like his leg right here. So I'm gonna take his leg and I'm just gonna really rough in because it's got very similar to ours. So it's got the top, it's got the shin and his foot's really long. And then he's, or not as long. Uh, and then he's got um, here and then I'm just gonna, like he's leaping. And he's got this belly because he's been eating a lot. Comes around, his tail. You know, I can stylize and interpret as much as I want to, but what makes um, a, a successful character a lot of times is whenever you don't deviate too far from the original here <coughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and establish his face because I think I'm gonna run into a problem here if I don't so they've got this long snout and then it comes to kind of a point Nose isn't that big, so nose is right there. He's got these two little. Psh, psh. That's what they're called. They're called. Psh, psh. Isn't that funny? How as artists we do, <laughs> we do things like that. I always make myself laugh. Yeah, that's what that's called. That's called a. Psh, psh. He's got his eyes that come up because he's got these wonderful. He's got this mask. That's what I love. I love raccoons and the fact they've got that mask. Man, they're like the. They're like the Batman of the of the of the animal world. And again, you know, whenever it comes to cartooning stuff, I wanna I wanna simplify, but I don't wanna oversimplify so far to the point where I lose the recognizability of what I'm trying to, you know. in here and I'm running out of my pencil this needs to come in just a little bit and it comes I had done an illustration a while back of rocket the raccoon and every single time I see a Rocket the Raccoon illustration, I go back to my own and all the things that I learned on that and just how much fun I had. You know? <clears throat> Anybody else ever do that? You see something you've done in the market. You know, like I've, I've drawn Mickey Mouse quite a few times and every single time I see Mickey Mouse in the marketplace. I look at him through the eyes of that um, that illustrator and artist. Let's get these ears that come up. They're kind of pointed like this. And go like this. Yeah. And you know, I look at it and and I'm like, oh, I would have changed it a little bit different there. I would have changed it there. There's a um, a really great. Illustrated, um, not illustrated, but animated. I 
exactly what it's called. Mickey Go or something like that. Just get a little fur that comes down right here. Let's get his teeth. Like, rawr. Anyway, I think it's Mickey Go, and it's just so freaking great. The, 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 the stories are hilarious. The, um, everything's really funny. I really enjoy it. The animation's fantastic, but my favorite thing about the entire show has to be, bar none, the backgrounds. The backgrounds to me are absolutely insane good. I can't even I, I can't even put into words how much I love the backgrounds. You know, I, I just love how beautiful they are. I love how illustrative they are and how simple they are. And and it's just absolutely freaking unreal beautiful. <clears throat> Anyway, so that's my two cents on Mickey Mouse. So we're going to be wrapping this up because I think this has taken a little bit longer than what I've liked. I'm just really, really trying to have fun with this this morning. got that grip that comes down he's kind of wrinkled here and he's got his fur that comes here and now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna start defining a little bit better the contours and the forms of the different uh, elements his foot comes up like this okay his fur is gonna come down okay comes around here and that arm's gonna jut up here 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 see I'm always trying to balance like right here I know there's an overlap I know this fur comes out just based upon my other illustration and he's got these gloves <laughs> and this one comes here and depending on how, you know, if I have a grip like this right here, then that fabric of the cape is going to come around like that. If that makes sense. Okay. And then just start defining that cape a little bit more. You know, and how that comes up and around. And then how this grip right here comes here. And now his fist, there's his glove. He's got the outside, comes around, around, around. He's got that thumb that comes up right here. Yeah, you like my sounds? That's what I do literally in my head. And this comes up. Might come out a little bit. very handy to have a sharpie pencil all ready to go. I don't have to stop. I don't have to wait. And again, I'm, I'm thinking all the time, I'm thinking of that other drawing that I did <clears throat> and how it comes around and how this foot and it comes here. You know, and two, I like working traditionally. You know, it, there's no real substitute for pen and pencil. I, I'll be honest with you. I've been working digitally now for almost 20 years. And, you know, I've worked on high-end stuff, low-end stuff. I've worked on uh, your Cintiq Companions, your, your Cintiq uh, HDs, your 
your Surface Pros, your iPad Pros, all this great technology that has surfaced within the past, you know, few years, but there is no substitute for this. There is no substitute for this. I'm going to be honest with you. I love working traditionally. I love feeling, we're going to have this come around because this goes right here. You can feel that resistance. <clears throat> Belly comes here. I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna have his mouth open a little bit here. Yeah. <sighs> Again, there's the sounds. And now what I'm doing is I'm going in and reestablishing and defining some of those um, the forms. I'm going to put some shadows in. Really accentuate some of those areas that I think will help the drawing. I listened to something last night. I think it was Ronnie. Uh, again, Ronnie Williford. Check him out. Great guy. And he said, um, you know, what is, what is that stage at which you stop? Well, it all depends on what your goal is. My goal today, obviously, is not to render this. My goal today is to just get that idea across. I'm going to color these hands in. It's just to get that idea across. You know, I'm not here to sit there and spend, you know, four and five hours on this piece of artwork. I'm just trying to get this idea across. So hopefully, <clears throat> you guys have enjoyed the short video of translating realistic, semi-realistic drawing of a raccoon into this ridiculousness that you see before you. You know, drawing to me is so much more than just a collection of actions. It is a it is literally to me a moment to myself. It's it's really hard to describe to those people who don't draw uh, how how incredibly therapeutic and important it is. But I really appreciate you guys coming and watching my videos. I'm going to put a, I was going to say I'm going to put a like and subscribe button, but yeah, if you, if you get a chance, just hit that subscribe button right now and that like button, it really helps. I'm trying to grow the channel to the point where I can actually spend more time on it. And, and help you guys out a lot more than I already am, if I'm helping at all. <clears throat> you know, I've got tons of experience in apparel. If any of you guys are interested in, in me doing some apparel, I've done you know apparel for close to 20 years. I've done product design for, golly, as long as I can remember, 20 years. And just really trying to give back to some of you guys who are interested in getting into this field. You know, the art field's a wonderful place. It's not all about games. It's not all about um, hold on. making money. Sometimes it's just about having fun. And that's what this was, having fun. So, yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do some apparel. I'll show you guys how to design some shirts and, and some rudimentary rules that I always have in my brain whenever I'm designing apparel. Um, same thing goes whenever I'm designing toys, whenever I'm designing just about anything. And, 
you know, whenever I do, again, whenever I do stuff like this, I want you guys to understand that I, I love what I do. I, I, I want you guys to get something from it. <coughs> and we're going to continue on with the whole animal series. <coughs> and hopefully you guys will get something on the other side. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. And we'll definitely, definitely, definitely see you soon. <clears throat> I gotta get rid of this cold, man. I feel like I've had a perpetual cold now for a year. Anyway, thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.